Volevo chiedere allo scrittore, com'è stata la collaborazione con Fincher e invece in relazione a un altro suo romanzo, ovvero Invisible Monsters, si è mai pensato a chi potrebbe dirigere un eventuale adattamento? Grazie. In regard to uh, David Fincher, uh, I'm not sure anybody really works with David Fincher. You just kind of agree with David Fincher. Yeah, he's he's got a vision, and he's he's a smart guy. And I think anytime you try to kind of second guess Fincher, you always run the risk of uh, creating a worse product. <laughs> Because if Fincher is suggesting something, there's a very good reason for it. And when they were first casting the Fight Club movie, <coughs> Courtney Love was living with Edward Norton. And Courtney Love wanted that part very badly. And she was taking the executive producer, Art Linson, out to dinner. And she was acting and dressing like the character and she was pretending to be Marla Singer because she really wanted to establish herself as the only Marla Singer possibility. But David Fincher thought that that was too obvious and he thought casting against type would be much smarter. So he suggested Helena Bonham Carter, which kind of sounded ridiculous to the rest of us. But then David said, David said, I want her to look just like Judy Garland did just before she died. <laughs> you know how bad that was? With that ratted out hair where you could see all the scalp? And she'd always be wearing some sequin dress with half the sequins gone. And she'd be just starved looking. I want her to look like that, like a dead Judy Garland. And she does. And he nailed it. And it's an iconic look. And David was right. Uh, so most of what I did with David was just defer. And uh, there was also kind of an a ongoing battle between David and Edward Norton. Because Edward wanted the, his character to be very, very sympathetic. To be really very likable for the audience to, to really engage with that character. But David thought that that was very secondary. He thought that that was kind of a, a cheap way out. Uh, David wanted the character to be very conflicting for the audience. So David wanted the character to be a lot less likable. And uh, Edward wanted the character to be very likable. And more often than not, I would be enrolled on David's side trying to argue that the character shouldn't be as likable. Because the character is doing a really despicable thing, trying to get his emotional needs met without having to express any kind of nurturing or caring for the strangers that are you know, nurturing him because they think he's dying. So the character is pretty sleazy on an emotional level and completely inauthentic throughout the movie. But David recognized that, and Edward Norton didn't want to play that. Uh, so most of that is just agreeing with David. And Invisible Monsters has been uh, optioned and developed by so many different entities. And right now, the, the people who made the first season of American Horror Story have it. And I think of any creative group so far that they're the most likely, they have the best resources and the best aesthetic for turning that into a, a feature film. So the American Horror Story people from the FX network uh, from the first season are developing monsters into a movie. Thank you. Sì, salve, eh, Francesco Carlo, agenzianza. Eh, lei, diciamo, in molti suoi racconti 
molto sui libri ha parlato di violenza eh, volevo sapere eh, se lei dovesse dare una definizione di, di violenza eh, che tipo di comunicazione c'è nella violenza se c'è una comunicazione First, for me, the violence is always consensual. It's always two people agreeing in a very structured way that they're going to engage in what looks like a violent act. You know, that's why Fight Club had so many rules. And for a way, myself and so many of my peers in my generation had shied away from violence and, and conflict all of our lives. And I wanted to create a kind of setting in which we could engage with violence to a very careful, consensual degree. That we could begin to experience larger and larger amounts of violence to find out what we were capable, not so much of inflicting, but of enduring. To find out just how powerful we were in, in surviving something. So in a way, Fight Club was this consensual, gradual game of, of experiencing violence. But it, always consensual, always a game. But on a larger level, all of my books include some very physical element. Because I want to engage the reader on not just an intellectual or an emotional level, but also on a, on a gut, physical level. And so the things that do that are, are violence, or sex, or drugs, or illness. And so if you can really unpack those elements, you can create a sympathetic reaction within the reader, and the reader will experience the experience of the drug, or the sex, or the violence, or the illness. And that's one way of fully involving the reader on a physical as well as an emotional and, and uh, intellectual level. So violence is just one, of, one, one element I play with. And I only play with that just because I, I want to always have something very physical in a story 